Happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode two of Beyond the Evaluation. Uh, again, my name is Brandon Platt. Um, I know it's been a few months since our last episode. Things have been kind of crazy um, since recording the inaugural episode. Uh, I took a new job at uh, the University of Miami as the baseball athletic trainer. And uh, obviously starting the season in January and February, um, things uh, got pretty busy and then things got even crazier as everybody knows. I'm sure everybody is um, both in and out of the healthcare profession uh, is kind of at a loss right now. Um, Things are changing incredibly rapidly and uh in the athletic training profession we are uh used to um, quick changes um we're we're used to things not um sticking on schedule and uh at a moment's notice uh everything can can go sideways um but i think this takes every uh, that to a new level um so initially my plan was to uh take uh the initial episode uh, the kinetic chain and branch off into some arm care uh, as baseball and softball uh, got going. Um, however, uh, in in light of the last couple of weeks uh, with uh, the pandemic of, of COVID nineteen, I, I wanted to take a moment to touch on that as uh, from a from a collegiate athletic trainer perspective, um, from a healthcare worker in general perspective. Uh, just from a general citizen perspective, uh, what we can do uh, in, in all those areas to try to uh, lessen the impact of this disease that is uh, taking over the country and the world. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it's something we need to be aware of. It's something we need to educate each other on. It's something we need to educate uh, those around us on. Uh, to really work together to lessen the spread of this disease. Um, and I'm just kind of going to speak off the cuff a little bit uh, on this today. Um, I've been spending the last couple of weeks uh, since the shutdown of, of the uh, really the sports world um, in between working from home and meetings and um, getting documentation together and catching up on, on every, all the administrative work that I, uh, can do from home. Um, thinking about how exactly to put this together. And I think the best way is just to speak candidly. Um, I think that, uh, it's very important to note, um, that we're all in this together and that we cannot individualistically go about uh, our business as usual because right now it is not business as usual. Um, That is not meant to incite any kind of fear in anybody. Um, It's it's just being very, very honest as a healthcare provider that, um, that we need to be smart about what we're doing. Um, We need to be smart about the information we're putting out there. Um, and, and we need to be both calm but prudent a, a, at this time. Um, so that being said, uh, our arm care lecture, if you will, or presentation or discussion um, will uh, take place in another time, hopefully here in the next week or two. Uh, as things kind of calm down, uh, we will get more of these um, the videos out uh, to you uh, for your resource um, uh, but as I said, um, just want to take a moment to talk about where we're at and where we need to go, uh, from an athletic training perspective. And in my opinion, from a, um, from a, a healthcare perspective and a country, uh, perspective, um, with regards to COVID-19. Um, so what is COVID-19? First of all, um, obviously there's a lot of information out there, just a general background, um, it is a, a, a new strand of what was essentially the easiest way to describe it is it's 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 similar to uh, the SARS epidemic, a sudden acute respiratory syndrome, or at least that's what comes from it. Um, COVID nineteen was discovered in two thousand nineteen, obviously uh, originating uh, in China, 
um, as has been widely publicized. Um, but the bottom line is it, it, it's here now, and, and we need to take steps to lessen its impact. Um, common symptoms are similar to that of, 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 of the flu uh, with aches, uh, chills, shakes, fever being a, a key component. And obviously, any kind of upper respiratory symptoms, you need to be especially uh, uh, sensitive to those. Um, you know, the, the bottom line is that, that this, this will present very similar to um, the flu or the common cold initially. Um, so it's things to watch out for uh, would be any of those upper respiratory symptoms. Um, washing your hands is, continues to be the key uh, way to try to eliminate this or limit the spread of this. Um, covering your mouth with your elbow when you cough, uh, not touching your face, uh, those are all very, very key if you have to be out and about. Um, washing with hand sanitizer being um, a very uh, key component. Um, and the other thing to remember is this is a virus that uh, has been shown to stay on surfaces for an extended period of time. Um, uh, you know, so uh, because it's in droplet form, um, anything, if you, t if, if somebody who is infected coughs in their hand, touches a surface or coughs on a surface, walks away, that can stay on that surface for an extended period of time. So making sure to clean all surfaces, especially community surfaces that you have to use, uh, very thoroughly, Wiping everything down um, is incredibly important. Um, but the bottom line is if you're not feeling well, if you have the upper respiratory symptoms, it's important to uh, discuss with your health care provider if, if you're able to remotely. But most importantly, if you're not feeling well um, and you're having those upper respiratory symptoms, um, stay home. Uh, you know, Keep a distance from people. Uh, Self-isolate. Uh, Self-quarantine. Um, you know, the incubation period for COVID-19 has been shown to be anywhere from 3 to 14 days um, to show, start showing symptoms. Um, and it's, it's very important that we, we kind of abide by um, what the CDC and the World Health Organization is telling us in order to limit the spread of this disease. Um, so, you know, that's, that's number one. Um, this is not something that we can, some of us can social distance and some of us can just ignore it and it's going to go away. It's going to continue to spread if, if we don't work together in this. Um, from an athletic training perspective, uh, I know that uh, particularly those individuals who are PRN athletic trainers, or high school athletic trainers, are working for hospitals, um, what can you do to help in this situation? Remember, we are um, healthcare providers, first and foremost. Uh, we are more than the sports that we cover. We are more um, than the athletes that we care for. Uh, we are more than just being on the sideline. Um, this hat is from AT, uh, or Advantage Athletic Training, AT Vantage. Uh, it, it is a um, company uh, in California that is a uh, you know, shameless plug to them. I get nothing from for saying this, but they do a great job with um, contracting athletic trainers, both working with employers and, and those looking for athletic trainers uh, t for their events, um, similar to go for Ellis, um, but also working with athletic trainers looking for work. Uh, but they put out this, this line of products um, really to stress that we're more than, than athletic trainers. We're, we're more than just the sports that we work with. We're more than just uh, sitting on the sidelines or sitting in the athletic training room. Uh, we are healthcare providers and we have the skills um, to do that. Um, to echo what President Lindley has said uh, through the NATA, get out and help in your local hospitals if you can. Obviously, protect yourself. Um, make sure that you have the correct personal protective equipment. Um, but volunteer to be, you know, that, that extra set of hands and, and that extra. Um, uh, source uh, of, of health care uh, for a, a system that is, is, is by and large overwhelmed right now. Um, it's, it's, it's what we can do as health care providers to not only 
um, continue to help in our community and to continue to help uh, our athletes, but also uh, everyone, um, all the active population, which is anybody who walks through the door, to be honest. Um, and, and I think it will help stress also um, who, what we are as a profession, which is more than, than just standing on the sideline. Um, so it was very intentional that I wore this hat today. Uh, and, and in addition to the shout out um, to Advantage Athletic Training, um, it, it's, it's very true right now, um, I think as much if not more than ever. Um, obviously, every, all the opinions in, in these videos are, are not necessarily those of my employer and, and are, are mine personally. And like I said, at the beginning of this video, I was, uh, wanted to speak off the cuff as far as my opinion as a healthcare provider, my opinions as an athletic trainer. Uh, but I, I do think that it's very, very important that we help each other out in whatever way that we can. Um, what are we doing from a college athletic training perspective? Obviously, right now we are, uh, me personally, we're, we're working um, remotely whenever possible. Um, our rehab, uh, our post-op patients are still getting the rehab that they need. But, um, you know, the biggest thing is we find ourselves so overwhelmed and so busy that I think a lot of administrative work sometimes falls by the wayside. And we stress the importance of documentation and the importance of um proving our worth um, and, and tracking our injuries and um, all of that. And I think this is a, a perfect time and something that we have taken advantage of is, is the ability to go back and do that, um, to not just have this be a sit around time or have this be a, a dead period for us is, is take advantage of what can we do that, that otherwise we may not have time to do. Um, what can we do to better serve our athletes uh, from a tracking perspective, how can this help our epidemiological approach? How can this help our uh, track some patterns that we see in injuries or illnesses um, so we can hopefully limit those in, in the future? Um, and how can we be better as sports medicine professionals? Um, how can we better work with other uh, sports medicine professions such as physical therapists, uh, our physicians, our team physicians, um, and, and those outside maybe of our uh, immediate area uh, of our ex expertise and um, try to grow as professionals and, and improve uh, how we can uh, better treat our athletes um, and our patient population. Um, again, more than just, more than a trainer per se, more than an athletic trainer. Um, so that, that's kind of what I would say to focus on from a, a collegiate perspective. Um, if you find yourself not really knowing what to do with uh, your newly found downtime. Um, and the last thing I'll say, and this is something I've really kind of, um, you know, thought long and hard about how to put this. Um, this is something, obviously, this disease pandemic is, is something that is rarely seen. Um, these are uncharted waters. But the one thing it does allow us to do is um, to focus more on our work-life balance. Um, it allows us the opportunity to spend more time with loved ones. It, it allows us the opportunity to think about the things that are important. I think a lot of times we put uh, all of our worth uh, and, and dump ourselves into our career. Um, all of us are very career-driven or else we wouldn't put in the hours and the effort and the time that we do. Uh, to our profession, but this is a time that we can help uh, really um, help ourselves to have a better work-life balance uh, moving forward. Um, this is uh, to, to really evaluate um, how can we better time manage, um, and, and sometimes, you know, you, you almost think that this is the universe's way of telling us to slow down a little bit. Um, so... Um, I, I would say take advantage of the time with your family as well. Uh, cherish the time that you have with your family um, and, and really um, the time that you have with your loved ones. So, um, you know, in closing, just keep washing your hands, stop touching your face, uh, and, and please follow the CDC recommendations on uh, staying home when you need to. Um, it, this will resolve much faster if we can flatten the curve through social distancing and through self-isolation, self-quarantine. If you're feeling sick, um, I know it's an inconvenience for a short period of time, but ultimately 
um, it, it will help lessen the impact of this disease uh, in the long term and um, may not affect you as a young, healthy individual, but certainly, certainly will help uh, perhaps save the life of somebody that you love or somebody in your community and ultimately as prof medical professionals. Um, that that is what we're charged to do is is both uh, improve life and just uh, provide the best possible uh, outcomes uh, for whatever our pa patient population might be um, so i hope everybody's staying safe um, enjoy the rest of your week um, obviously you know please like uh, i said before um, like subscribe share um, you know and, and please reach out with any questions uh, be happy to, uh, you know, to help uh, in any way that I can as far as my personal opinions or provide uh, to help provide resources uh, moving forward. I'm obviously not the foremost expert on the subject, but um, as somebody in the front lines, I think that uh, I felt charged to um, just kind of put something out. Uh, so hang in there, athletic training community, sports community, uh, general world population. Um, let's work together. Uh, we'll get through this together.